is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide first order? And if so, well then, what's the value of the rate constant for the experiment? We have one experiment over time. What shall we do with it? Well, we're gonna have to add a new column. So what I've done here is I have written it with an additional column because the first order integrated rate law uses logarithms. So I needed a column with logarithms of the concentration. Now, is a plot of this logarithm versus time linear? These two differ by 100 seconds. These two differ by 100 seconds. Let me look at the difference between these, 0.084, and the difference between these. And when I do that, I get 0.081. That looks pretty good, but maybe I should check myself a little more. Now, this doesn't continue up by hundreds, but I do see that the difference here of 500 is the same, and the difference here of 500 is the same. So let's check these two and see if they are equal to each other. I get 0.414 and 0.415. This looks like it's linear here. This looks like it's linear here. Is it linear all the way through? Well, remember, this was a difference of 100. This was a difference of 500, five times as much. And if we look at this and say five times 0.08, we would get 0.4, and of course there was a little more. So yes, within the limits of sig figs, it appears to me that this is linear, that this was in fact a first order decomposition answering the first question on the page. Now, the other question is what's the value of the rate constant? I can pick one of these to do that. Let's say that I pick 1,000 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna use the data from here. What was the rate equation? It was uh, the logarithm of, in this case, the concentration of hydrogen peroxide equals the logarithm of the hydrogen peroxide value at zero, and then minus kT. I'm looking for k, the t is gonna be the 1,000. Um, these numbers I can get from up here and here, so let's fill them in. This is the one at the 1,000 second mark. This is the one at the zero mark, minus k and then times 1,000 seconds. If I do this, I get negative 0 0.830 equals negative 1,000 k, and I would end up ultimately saying that k was 8.30 times 10 to the negative fourth inverse seconds because these being logarithms were just pure numbers. So the only place that we found any units was right here in seconds. So this per second. I kind of don't trust this yet because it's weird. What if I had done the one at 200 seconds? Would I do any better? Okay, so I'll grab the value at 200 seconds, the minus 0.858 and say, is that equal to the minus 0.693 minus k times the 200 seconds? And I will end up working it up the same way. Minus 0.165 equals negative 200 times k. k is going to end up being not so much different. 8.25 times 10 to the negative fourth inverse seconds. And if you did this also for 100 seconds, you would see that you got something similar again. At 100 seconds, you would get that K was 8.4 times 10 to the negative fourth inverse seconds. At that point, you would say, you know what? I really don't have three sig figs. I really only have two. I think I should write down 8.3 times 10 to the negative fourth inverse seconds because that last digit's always in doubt. So, okay, if it's goes up just a little bit, it would be the four. The two five would round to the 0.3. Here would be the 0.3. So overall, I'm stating that this should be a good answer for what the rate constant is for this experiment.